So it's like golden Oreo, Oreo with that bird, you know? Did you just say Oreo? Did you say Oreo? It's a bird. It's a bird. <laughs> How do you what say it? You know that Oreo? bird? More! This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites to online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence. Lunch break! Hi everyone, or should I say, Jiao Kak Ban. Today we have a very exciting and interesting lunch break. As you can see, I'm the only one from the Wang Fu team here, and we have not just three, four guests here today. Um, because we're gonna do a lunch break all about being Vietnamese and growing up Vietnamese. So, yay! Let's introduce everyone. So, we have Michael, aka Food with Michael, has been on lunch Hello. break before. And then we have the J Rod twins, Jason Justin, has Hello, also been on here. And we have a someone new to lunch break, Soy, <laughs> Food with Soy. Yeah, so I'm really excited for this because this is something we've been trying to talk about for a really long time. And I feel like whenever I see you guys, I'm like, yes, be at pride. <laughs> <laughs> we always try to speak Vietnamese to each other too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, mine is so broken. So we have a plus one from our Patreon today. Our Patreon plus one is Han Do. And she requested Viet food. So did everyone get Viet food today? I didn't Wait, even Michael, why is your face like that? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I forgot. Who forgot food? I forgot about the food. It's I'm great, food. you guys Hello. all forgot food? Oh, actually, You're I such did. a liar. Oh. No, I have it. No. no, no, mine's in the fridge. <laughs> let me go get it. Mine's in the fridge. Oh yeah, mine too. Let me go. Let me go. Can you guys see the chaotic energy already? This is why I wanted this group here. I got my food from Golden Deli. I got gong tam, tit nu. Okay. Oh wait, I got I got my food. <laughs> I have a I have a mango. Oh my. I have a mango. You guys don't have to. Yeah, what you? I have a bun me. Yeah, what what Vietnamese food? Oh. There we go. Yeah. Okay, so How old what is do it, you Michael? Have? How old is it's it? Two days old. <laughs> I didn't even know what I got. Oh, I got. Wow. Oh, that looks great. Oh, nice. Ooh. Is that yeah. Tenyo? I know it's no like worries. lunch break, and you guys were <laughs> No, I didn't find my food. It's in the fridge. I just. But, didn't uh, I'm really grateful because I feel like there's not a big Vietnamese community, especially within like media and YouTube and LA, especially. So I feel like whenever I see you guys, I'm like, wow, I can be more in touch with my culture. I think it's interesting because all of us actually have like slightly different Vietnamese upbringings. So I wanted to like talk about that. Oh man, well so I originally grew up in like Florida. So my mm, Vietnamese yeah. experience was like very limited. Um, actually my whole Asian American experience was very limited until like college. Mm. And then I joined like the Viet club in college and then I was like, whoa, there's so many other people BSA. like <laughs> me. <laughs> the funny thing is I grew up watching a lot of like Vietnamese dub dramas. You know, like the, oh, yeah. the the Hong Kong dramas. Oh yeah, my but mom for, shows. Yeah, Phim Tao. Yeah, but for the longest time, I thought it was like Vietnamese people until like oh. the dubbing was off and they started speaking Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, wait, what? Yeah, so I grew up in Southern California, and if you guys didn't know, Garden Grove is one of the largest Viet populations in the U.S. So like, yeah, my family would constantly venture up there like on weekends and like so i feel like i was very integrated into like viet culture but i know like not everyone had that as well well we grew up all over the west coast but we were born in seattle which um has a pretty i think was on the list as well like number 15 of having the most vietnamese people so yeah seattle. yeah seattle um, but we grew up in a suburb outside of seattle and so our neighborhood was pretty white like i said we traveled all up and down the west coast from ages 8 to 12 when we were um monks and I know you guys know briefly about mm. that story already we've shared that briefly with you guys we also had a white dad growing up as well he was our stepdad I think it was weird because we had a lot of like phases in our life where okay maybe we had our mom and our white dad in the picture for a short period of time and then we had the strangers <laughs> the monks and nuns and the guardians or like that and almost kind of living like a foster child like life mm -hmm, mm -hmm. kind of which was really it was like one of the most transformational um periods in our life for sure when you first start being like conscious i guess like as a kid so yeah we have a lot of memories from like living um, at a lot of buddhist vietnamese temples across the west coast uh we did um yeah and fuck though i don't know if you guys are familiar with that term oh yeah it's like sunday school Oh. Um, but we lived at the school, so I was just kind of like... <laughs> you just had to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we learned most of our Vietnamese there. And I think we picked up a lot of the um, reading from reading a lot of Buddhist books and stuff too. The sutras. Yeah, yeah sutras and the, and the prayers and stuff. So we actually memorized like 
whole books. But didn't understand anything. Yeah. <laughs> didn't understand anything at yeah, all. <laughs> I was actually from um, San Jose. Yeah, I was born in LA, but then my, my family <laughs> moved up to NorCal. So I've oh, been nice. there since like elementary school and high school and all that. And then afterwards we came down. So I'm half Vietnamese, half Vietnamese and half Laos. So I understand both com completely, like 100%. So if my parents talk to me, if I hear anyone else talk to me, I'll understand both. Um, it was just kind of, my parents, they really switch on the the Lao and the Vietnamese a lot, so that's probably why I understand so much of it because it mm. wasn't like it was just it wasn't just one language; it was both, mm -hmm. and it was just constantly throughout my life. And I I feel kind of fortunate because I mean I may not have the best speaking ability, but I at least understand a good portion of it. I went to college down here, and then just kind of been here ever since. So it's a good I think it's a good ten. 15 years now. That's cool. You got the NorCal experience, but you also got the SoCal experience. Yes, there's a, they're, they're kind of really different, I realize. Like, yeah. NorCal's very Which chill. one do you like more? I like SoCal. I mean, I think just because there's a lot hey. of things to do. There's a lot of things to do. There's a lot of uh, people to see. And plus, Disneyland's right here, so that's always a bonus. <laughs> of course. You know? So it's funny, you know, the twins, um, you guys both grew up with the temple. This is a stereotype. It's also truth. I grew up, like, at the nail salon. If you didn't know, Vietnamese are stereotypically like known to be like manicurists, um, but there is, do you, do you actually know why? Wasn't someone like trying to help like create jobs for Vietnamese women and that was like a thing that they could pick yeah. up and sell in, right? There's a Hollywood actress named Tippi Hedren and she was helping refugees like integrate into like US society. Oh wow. And like her own person, manicurist taught 20 women how to do their nails and actually a few of them startup beauty schools that are still here in SoCal. Oh, wow. Amazing. Yeah, which is amazing. Wow. So the whole nail industry got, you know, overseen by Viet people, hey. <laughs> so I grew up like, you know, after school, I would go home and go to the nail salon. And like, so that's just like what I knew. And like, I think back then I wasn't ashamed of it, but I just knew that it was like a stereotype. And I was like, why are people making fun of this? But I feel like I embraced it because I'm like, hell yeah, I get free eyebrow wax and you know, <laughs> my nails always done. Free acrylics, you know? <laughs> yeah, my, my mom was a nail tech and I'm not gonna lie, when I was younger, I definitely was kind of like ashamed, but only because like, like it's a service industry job, right? Yes, and it wasn't yeah. until I got older and my mom explained to me that like her job is so wonderful because she gets to make other people feel Beautiful. prettier mm -hmm. that I like was like, oh my God, that's like so touching and makes like, what she does so rewarding because she could like do anything she wants but she chooses to be a nail tech right like it isn't like a like she wants to like make people feel beautiful when i was younger i felt bad asking my mom to do my nails or like do, doing anything for me right because i'm like oh she's always working really hard mm -hmm. servicing other people i don't want her to do that I for agree. me but now that i'm older and when i visit home she's like always wanting to do my nails and like now it's like a bonding experience for us Aww. so like i'm like down for it now but it's funny now, like my mom, she also likes that bonding experience of like doing my nails. Um, I'm actually curious, do you guys have Viet names? I don't. I'm like probably one of the few people that does not. I don't know why I don't have one. Well, um, we can come up with one for you. Oh, you, you guys don't have one? Okay, so you look like a trunk to me. A trunk? <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. So trunk or dome? Dome. Dome. Either one, either one. <laughs> yeah, we, we weren't given one at birth, but when we became monks, we got a uh, Buddhist name, which is like a oh. Dharma, Dharma name for people uh -huh. who are familiar with like Buddhism, uh, and it's mine's Taichung, and mine's Taenyu, and those are names that came straight out of um, like the the Buddha sutras. So oh, yeah. yeah, that's cool. Nice. But nice. soy, I think soy has a Vietnamese name, no? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I do. Um, my middle name is like, like Kim or Kim, which is like gold, and then uh -huh. my first name is Wan, like O A N H. So it's mm. like golden Oriole, Oriole, the bird. You know? Did you just, like say Oreo? Did you say Oreo? <laughs> it's a bird. <laughs> How do you what say it? You know that Oreo? bird? It's, oh, I no, think I know what you're trying like to say. Bird. Oreo? Yeah, I have a Viet name too. And it's two parts. It's Yim Me. And my parents said it's because there's like a famous singer apparently. And they're like, she's pretty and beautiful. We want you to be that too. <laughs> and talented. <laughs> All right. I'm kind of glad my last name is not wing i mean like i love the last sorry but, but no because my name is so common like jennifer it's like we jennifer know like wing. 20 jennifer wins i know <laughs> jennifer wow wins. i love I, the last we, name we love wing, them though. all yes we love them all i think i read somewhere that 40 percent of the vietnamese people have the last name win actually my mom and dad both have the last name win so that was really confusing for the longest time 
because I was like, I hope are you guys related? aren't related, and they're not. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> but it's like really confusing, right? Because if they're both wins. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you guys have like well siblings? Well, it, obviously the J Rod twins have siblings, but like for me, my parents' name like my name was Juan, and then my brother's name was Min, and then it went to like. Dan, Jolene, Matthew, Paul. Oh. Like, slowly, oh. they associate... Like, Getting they started assimilating to, like... American... <laughs> American culture. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Interesting. yeah. Wow. Because my... It was, like... I guess because it was hard, because when I grew up with my name, like, being in kindergarten and having that name was very difficult for right. other people. So I guess my mom started making it easier, but yeah. I like my Vietnamese name a lot. Um, gonna interrupt by saying, if you want to support us, go to wongfustore.com for some awesome merchandise we're gonna be designing new stuff so keep an eye out you guys touched about this a little bit earlier but let's talk about the language um how fluent are y'all <laughs> i know i'm not very fluent Oof. so <laughs> i like i i get nervous because i hang out with soy a lot i get nervous around her because she's oh, like, <laughs> like number 10 i'm just like oh my yeah, god so can good, you not soy. maybe feel so little like this is so degrading for me no i i i my vietnamese isn't that great i think like she the part of it that, that makes it like you no know, it's really true no it's, it's a really confidence good. Guys, I have an it's idea. It's the confidence. I have yes. an idea. Yes. For the next minute, we only we can only speak Vietnamese. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, think Viet Cong. Let's okay, go. Okay. Let's title. Here we go. Yeah, okay, I'm really going to lose. That's not going to happen. <laughs> okay, wow. Soy, um, <laughs> bang soy đang ăn gì vậy? Hay ngon. Bang soy đang ăn sườn nướng. Mấy em đang làm cái gì vậy? Um... I'm eating a bun me. Hey! Hello! <laughs> you hey. have two Vietnamese words in there. Phải nói, phải nói tiếng Việt, tiếng Việt. Oh, all of a sudden you know Vietnamese. What happened there? Huh? Come here? Nói gì vậy? Come here. Come here. Mày kìa nói gì vậy? She got that like Vietnamese egg yolk going on. I know, right? Yeah, she did. <laughs> so for our non-Vietnamese viewers, there are different dialects of Vietnamese. So it's like North, Central, South, just to break it down more easy. Yeah, so then we kind of know with the accents because it's very tonal and it's a very distinct dialect. That we, I, so I think the test is uh, di ve or di ye. It's like oh, yeah, yeah, I do that ve. too. Ve. Ve is like North, right? And ye is like na na. See, okay, so Vietnamese is very hard to learn because it's very tonal and mm -hmm. yeah. you can so easily mix up words. Okay, wait, uh, so I'm curious, did you guys go to Vietnamese school? Mm -mm. I think that's why probably my Vietnamese is not the greatest, is I've never been to Vietnamese school. Mm -hmm. The only exposure I had was, because my parents used to, a long time ago, used to own a Vietnamese restaurant. Oh. So that was like my only, I guess, Vietnamese exposure. And then I was in like, I don't know what they call it, it's a certain type of school where you get vacation, so you don't get a summer, you get vacation breaks throughout the year. Different versions on which one you could pick. And I did notice as I have the February off that it was I was in the class with a bunch of Vietnamese people that realized I guess that block period was because it landed a lot of ah, Vietnamese nice. people and Chinese people had the same class I had so that was probably my only exposure in I regards see. to like being with Vietnamese language yeah. and Vietnamese people. So I'm not sure if I shared this story with you guys but I have shared it like on my social page. So basically like my dad plopped me into Vietnamese school second grade specifically with no prior knowledge. I didn't know the alphabet. I didn't know the accent so he just plopped me into second grade and they were already learning like words and I had no idea what was going on and I think it was actually like a Catholic integrated school so you also have to learn like yeah a lot of like religious like text and whatnot in Vietnamese <laughs> I was having such a hard time I failed everything and I felt so dumb because I wasn't in the right grade so I think because of that I felt really frustrated that I didn't know my language and I felt like it wasn't meant for me to be learned in a way, sadly, which is unfortunate. So now it's like, oh, looking back, I'm like, I wish I kept up with it. And like, I, I d honestly do get intimidated with Soy because sometimes I'll talk to her. I'm like, what are you saying right now? Because I don't understand. <laughs> That's why you don't hang out with me anymore. I see. Just let me know, bro. <laughs> I'll but switch I mean, over. Like, but it is fun. Like when I do hang out with Soy, like, I do get to practice here and there because it really does help mm -hmm. sharpen my skills. Even if yeah. I don't have the best grammar, I do remember like a lot of things that starts coming back to me. Yeah, I feel like it's mainly like vocabulary. Like once you build that, like you kind of yeah. can like formulate sentences and whatnot. I feel like mainly embarrassed when I'm like talking to like elders and oh, yeah. family. They're definitely like, mm. my grandma's so, like, what are you saying? Oh my God. So, sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm embarrassing you. I think elders like appreciate the effort because you know, yeah. like it's so hard retaining that culture. Mm -hmm. And if they see you put the effort, even if they kind of make fun of you, I know like they really appreciate it. Something. <laughs> <laughs> so we have two food bloggers here. We can't not talk about the food. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's hard, right? Because there's like so there's many so different many. types of. It's I so get hard. asked that. I feel like I get asked that a lot. But Vietnamese food is like my top tier food in general. Me too. Yes. Um, because of a the ingredients, right? We have a mixture of like herbs Lighter. and like mm -hmm. different flavors. 
but then we have very strong soup tastes and like it's all very different but um for me like like you know bun bao yeah just really like bun bao for so some good. reason like those little rice cakes and those things with a little bit of mum and then like it's just it's like my favorite dish but it's like not very i guess like popular so, my favorite rhymes with yours i like bun sale <laughs> yeah i was oh, gonna say my, yeah. my favorite is probably bun he's sale. a rapper so it's like pancake yeah <laughs> I guess they call oh, it like, really a like crepe or something. Yeah. Yeah, Vietnamese um, crepe basically. I know. Why are they just trying to? They just just just, just get bun, bun sale. Yeah. We don't have to like have an equivalent. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I do. I do like bun sale. I think that's probably one of my favorites. I also do enjoy boom rail and boom away. So. Ooh, I like boom those are like probably I because I do like the soupy stuff, but I do choose boom away and boom rail because there's like a lot of spices going on and stuff like that. Um, mm. And then I like a lot of desserts like Jeva Mel and like everything else. So mm -hmm. it's just, it's there's so much. I really, it's just, I guess, what I'm in the mood for, I'll go and eat. I just, I love like spring rolls, bun everything, bun gong. <laughs> Nam -nam. Oh, cafe soda. Cafe soda. Oh, yes. Vietnamese coffee is number one. Vietnamese coffee. Number one. Do you guys like ganjul? Yes. I oh, love oh, ganjul. Ganjul. That's like one of my tops for sure. Ganjul yeah. with tedka, like that typical, like, oh, daily so meal. Good. I don't really cook, but. Um, I, I, you know, I love my parents, so they honestly cooked like a lot of Vietnamese just, just mm. for me too, if mm. I ever need to. Oh, so lucky. Um, but yeah, I, I love Vietnamese food, so I, I would like to try. I just, I don't feel like I would re remember a lot of the ingredients and I'm recipes saying. and stuff. Like, my mom's tried to teach me before, but then like she always like just pushes me aside. It's like, let me do it. Mm. And then I, she's like, just watch me. So I'm like, okay. And then I watch her. She's just like eyeballing. Like, you do this, 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 this. I'm like, okay, well, yeah. well, what's yeah, that no ingredient called? It's just eyeballing. Use magic just, cups. Yeah. But like, what's yeah, so, that? It's, yeah, so, it's so funny. I, I, asked my, I asked my mom for like a recipe the other week. Oh, me I was too. like, I want to film a video. And then she just gave me the ingredients. And then I was like, okay, so what are the steps? And then she's like, how did it turn out? And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> my mom told me to look like, at YouTube. Good? And I was like, no, I yeah. want your recipe. What do you love the most about being Viet? And we'll end it with that. I want to say food just because I love the food. Mm -hmm. But that's just me. I, I There's just something about the food for me that I feel a connection to. I, I don't know if it's because my parents had a restaurant and I just feel like, oh, like we've been making ban hoi and like stuff like that all our lives. So I feel a connection with that. Um, but that was that was the premise of our, uh, my upbringing was they, they had a ban hoi restaurant. So they would make a lot of that and just sell it out. Uh, like growing up, I definitely had identity issues when it came to like embracing the Vietnamese, I guess like heritage and just the just the culture. Um, and I actually didn't really know what it what it looked like to me as as a Vietnamese American, seeing that there was like so many so many clashes of culture in my household and just yeah, it was really hard. And so I think like throughout most of my adolescence, um, I really to not be Vietnamese, I guess. Like, I, I kind of, like, resisted it. Thankfully, through YouTube and through, like, exploring that career um, and then, like, covering Vietnamese music and doing Vietnamese music, I, I sort of found a way to um, explore Vietnamese culture again and um, embrace it, I guess. Our upbringing was a very interesting one, and I truly don't think that we would have became monks and lived in a temple if we weren't Vietnamese. It was just a very unique situational thing that just happened to us, and um, I'm grateful that we got to experience that because it really shaped who we are, our morals, our beliefs. For example, I don't know if your parents were refugees, were they? For me, yes. Yeah, so I, I think, <clears throat> yeah, like my mom, just she, she was the only person from our family who escaped from Vietnam, and then, so yeah, I think just her struggles and everything just also really help shape us into who we are today as well too. Like totally resonates with me because I feel like when I was growing up, I was really into like, um, kind of like K-pop and the Korean culture. And I was kind of like suppressing being Vietnamese for a hot second, like really, really quick second. Only because like, it was like cool and all this like trendy stuff. And I was like feeling kind of like, oh, like I wish like Vietnamese people were cool, right? I realized that like, why can't I be a cool Vietnamese person? You know, like why can't I help other you know, Vietnamese kids and like families and understand that like being Vietnamese is so amazing. All stems from like family, right? In our in our Vietnamese culture, like that's the number one thing. Like I learned Vietnamese because my mom's an immigrant and she only spoke Vietnamese. Yeah, I just like want to continue to like have that feeling of like pride in my culture, even though I've never been to Vietnam, like period. And I'm pretty sure if I ever go to Vietnam, I probably would stick out like a sore thumb, you know, not because of my colored hair, but probably because of my like terrible Vietnamese. Comp it's definitely like something special about us. And I didn't realize that until like I got older that is like so key, right? Like I could be anything else, but I'm Vietnamese. Like embrace it a lot more now. And I want other people to feel comfortable embracing it, you know? 
yeah I know I really connect with what you guys said and like for me it is like something different like when I was growing up like I feel like I always connected specifically with my Southeast Asian friends and Vietnamese friends specifically I never really understood why until like more recently and I feel like just like being proud of being Southeast because a lot of us or sorry a lot of our parents are immigrants but they are like most likely war refugees and they been through so much been through so much trauma and like to be here and just the fact we're thriving you know doing our own thing like because of them I think that means a lot to me so I try to carry that with my heart and like you know live my best life because that's when my parents literally sacrificed like their lives like and their livelihoods to be here so I think that's what makes me proud and to see other Vietnamese people thrive too okay so last shout out to our plus one from patreon Han Do Han Do thank you for being here with us and celebrating our Viet culture um, we have a podcast on all the platforms so if you want to listen to us there we are on all we are on all of those um, grab some merch at wongfustore.com and for more content like this subscribe to us and see you next Thursday yay bye bye ciao bye ciao, ciao. ciao. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. Since we also release Lunch Break as a podcast, we utilize the audio blocks feature to embed our audio straight into our website and integrate with other platforms. So head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready, use code WONGFU at checkout for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain name.